Make up mine. Hey all this is a little bit of a filler video, as the next weapon subcategories episode needs a bit more time to cook, so in the meantime, I wanted to bring you all a little ranking. It's a pretty commonly held belief in the TF2 community that each class's stock weapons tend to be among their best options, and that unlockable weapons tend to be optional side grades more times than not. Your mileage on this belief may vary, just look at things like the crossbow and the sandwich, but where it absolutely does not apply is each class's stock melee weapons. More times than not, a class's melee weapon tends to be their most disposable option, with each class having multiple alternatives that handily outperform their stock in terms of utility and overall usefulness. Based on this, I wanted to do a little experiment and see which class's stock melee weapon holds up the best. We're going to be ranking each class's stock melee and see if any of them can stand on their own amidst the game's myriad of other options. I obviously know that every stock melee functions identically, save for scout and spies, so for this video, we'll be primarily ranking them based on how much each class makes use of them compared to their counterparts. That said, let's roll. I don't think this will be a controversial pick at all, but the worst stock melee weapon in the game is easily the Pyro's Fire Axe. This is an interesting case, as the Fire Axe is the only weapon in the game with an objective direct upgrade available in the exact same slot as it. Not in the sandwich uber saw sort of way, where it's an ideological upgrade, but in a this weapon is identical with an additional upside kind of way. In this case, it's the third degree, a weapon that functions identically to the stock Fire Axe with an additional unique positive mechanic and no downsides. It is quite literally TF2's only pay-to-win weapon. Because of this, and Pyro's general mechanics as a class, there is quite literally no reason to ever be hitting enemies with your stock melee weapon as Pyro. With the third degree, just use that, and without it, just run over enemies with your flamethrower for more close-range damage over a smaller period of time. All in all, Pyro's Fire Axe is a clear choice for the bottom of the list, and a weapon that I don't think is ever a serious consideration. I'm sorry if that burns any of you Pyro mains out there. Next up is a weapon that's placement pains me a little bit, both due to how funny it is and because it's on my favorite class, but the second to bottom place has to be Heavy's Fists. Aside from Pyro, Heavy is easily the class who has the least reason to be hitting enemies with his stock melee weapon. Not only does he have options like the Fists of Steel and Fast Gloves, which provide on equip bonuses and don't actively require you to hit enemies, but he also has weapons like the Holiday Punch and the Crit Gloves, which do provide positive on hit bonuses. On top of that, Heavy is simultaneously the slowest class in the game, and and the one who outputs the highest amount of close range sustained damage out of any class on offer, so the situations where you'll be in punching range of enemies and not revved up are exceptionally few and far between. If you're not running around intending to punch people as heavy, you really won't find yourself in situations to do it all that often. They're not made straight up obsolete like the Fire Axe, but the fists are definitely not punching up. I'm sorry heavy, this is one boxing match you simply can't win. For our final example of a class whose stock melee weapon is directly outclassed by a single option, we have Medic. Now, the Bone Saw does have one pretty notable upside, in that it's the highest DPS melee in Medic's entire arsenal that also doesn't compromise his health, but also the Uber Saw exists. This is a clear and unfortunate example of an unlockable option simply being the objective best in slot pick. While the Bone Saw might deal more damage over time, Medic is not a class who's intended to secure kills on his own, and the sheer utility of one fourth of your uber every swing is too strong to pass up. And if you're not fiercely married to the uber saw, then the solemn vow is also a powerful medic option that can be surprisingly useful. While the bone saw is arguably the most useful for a battle medic, the uber saw and even solemn vow offer more to you and your team in terms of your actual intended role as the medic. A few extra swings of damage every few seconds doesn't really matter in the face of guaranteed uber charge after only four swings, or being able to scout recon on the enemy team that the other melee weapons offer. You really can't heal that wound, I'm sorry. Next up is the first class on the list whose placement is entirely due to the stiff competition in their melee slot, Scout. Now, I think Scout's stock bat is definitely an iconic weapon, and one that I can see the merits in as a pure damage tool to some extent, especially in people who can't consistently land all of their scattergun shots, but in general, Scout has an incredibly stacked lineup of melee weapons that's overall utility significantly outmatched the potential of the bat. Between the Rap Assassin and Boston Bashers Bleed and Uber Farming, the Candy Cane's Healing, the Atomizer's Mobility, and the others others, Scout simply has too many powerful utilities available in his melee slot to make the purely damage-oriented stock bat ever worth equipping. I can see its merits as a damage dealer if you're a scout who frequently falls back on it to clean up low-health enemies, but once you've developed your aim a bit more and start consistently securing kills without ever needing to pull out your melee, that upside quickly crumbles. All in all, the bat isn't as bad as the previous three options, but it's also not hitting a home run either. 
It's time for a classic case of same shit, different toilet, because Soldier is in pretty much the exact same situation as Scout. The stock shovel isn't bad and does have genuine utility as a close range damage dealer in cases where the enemy closes the distance on you without a shotgun, but it's overall outshined by Soldier's incredibly stacked lineup of melees. The incredibly useful disciplinary action and escape plan are obviously difficult to pass up, but the real competition lies in the Market Gardener. While it does have a slower swing speed, its potential to guarantee instant kills with resourceful rocket jumps and smart positioning while also dealing uncompromised damage compared to the shovel is what really causes it to outdo the stock. There's just no reason to ever bring the stock shovel when Soldier's other options offer so much more. Again, with the less boisterous melee lineup, Soldier's shovel could be a real contender, especially on an explosive class who can't use his primary weapon at close range without risking self-damage, but as is, it really can't dig itself out of this mid-tier hole. Would you believe that over halfway through the list here, we're just now reaching the good stock melees? First up is the Engineer's Wrench. Now, the obvious elephants in the room here are the Southern Hospitality and the Jag, which are both separately considered direct upgrades to the stock wrench for different reasons. And while I know that that's not a glowing endorsement for the stock wrench, I think it does offer legitimate utility as an all-arounder without being completely outmatched by other options. Engineer's other wrenches are certainly strong, and you could argue that he's in the same situation as Scout or Soldier, but I find the uncompromised all-around usefulness of the stock wrench to shine a bit more brightly in maintaining and putting up Engineer's buildings than the bat or shovel do in simply dealing damage. Engineer has more to gain from an unimpeded generalist utility than most other classes do simply due to its base mechanics, and as a result, I find the stock wrench to be a safe if potentially niche option within his lineup. It's not the best, but it's far from bad or useless. And now for what might seem like a potential sleeper pick, the Sniper's Kukri. I know that having this so high up on the list might seem a bit crazy, but when you look at Sniper's melee lineup and see that two of his four options are the Tribalman Shiv and the Shaw and Shaw, it'll start making a little bit more sense. Even the infamous Bushwalker relies on a combo with a secondary to reach its full potential, whereas the Kukri just kind of provides unfiltered raw melee damage to a class who probably needs it more than any of the others in the game. If you're ever playing Sniper without the Jurati, or not a quick scope god, you want to bring an SMG or a backpack, or you're just all around want to deal good melee damage, then you'd be hard pressed to find a better option to fall back on than the Kukri. Sniper really does have a lot of use for uncompromised raw melee damage in a way that most other classes don't, and unlike Scout or Soldier, he doesn't really have a large number of best in slot options to outmatch his stock. This might seem like an innocuous weapon, but I promise it's Sniper's best standalone melee option for sending enemies six feet down under. Remember everything I said about the Engineer being able to benefit from an all-arounder melee weapon with no frills? Well, take everything I said there, but apply it to killing this time instead. The Stock Knife is a criminally underrated tool within the Spy's lineup, and one that offers unparalleled safety and consistently to a class that desperately needs both. All of his best unlockable options, most notably the Kunai and Big Earner, feature substantial negatives that strong-arm the Spy into very specific weapon-based playstyles, whereas the Stock Knife is just kind of Spy in his purest form. No frills, no crippling downsides or overbearing positives, just good old sneaking, backstabbing, meat slapping spy. Considering that every other option features some kind of sweeping alteration to the class's game plan and base abilities, there's genuine appeal to just kind of playing spy the way he was originally envisioned and intended. If you ever want to play the purest, least altered version of this class on offer, then the stock knife is the way to go. Or if you just want to be safe, which I also understand. And as our uncontested best stock melee, we've got the Demo Man and his iconic Scrumpy. The bottle is amazing not because of what it does, but because of what it doesn't do. Did you ever realize that literally every unlockable Demo Melee, aside from the Pain Train, is designed to be used with Demo Knight, or otherwise has significant penalties? They all have holster and deploy speed penalties, and are all transparently designed to be used with shields and boots. By comparison, the stock bottle is the option that complements pure stock Demo Man the most, and that's important because stock Demo Man might just be the best all-around pure stock class in the game. The Sticky Bomb Launcher and Grenade Launcher are just that useful, and having access to an immediately accessible no-frills melee weapon to clean up over-encroaching enemies is indispensable to their overall playstyle. If you ever want to play Demo Man, just Demo Man, and not Demo Knight or Hybrid Knight, the bottle is the clear winner. It facilitates one of the strongest playstyles in the game to function at close range, and for that, it's also the winner of this video. 
And that was a little melee weapon tier list for you guys to enjoy while I work on my next big video. I realize this video might have had a hot take or two in it, and I apologize for that. If any competitive players want to chime in and tell me that the bone saw or the stock fist or the stock bat or the shovel are actually really good in DSL, Poop Lander, Series 9, ESL, or whatever, then I promise you I won't listen. And I hope you all have a fantastic day before, during, and after watching, and I'll catch you all later. Cheers.